The Black Pig by Kate Price. I joined the fast flow of commuters as they tumbled out of Tunbridge Wells Station and marched in an orderly fashion from the front of the station and across the road towards Hooper's. Having made it across the road with the wave of people, we then jostled along Grove Hill Road. Just for a moment I thought I'd broken free as I crossed onto the right-hand side of the street, but no, I was swept along at a fast pace until I reached the doors of the Black Pig Pub. Hesitantly, I placed my hand on the door and leant into it, though, being quite stiff, it needed a slightly bigger shove. The door opened ajar and an icy chill escaped quickly in the form of a mist, which lingered over me and then rushed past me. Quite odd, I thought, as I wasn't expecting anything of the sort. The door bounced back and I tried for a second time, this time giving it a real shove and again the icy chill hovered over me, though this time it drifted through the gap and down the hill in the direction of the station, picking up speed just like the first waft of mist. Most peculiar. I shrugged my shoulders and this time I toppled in, though not very elegantly. As I gazed to the left, I could see groups of commuters, obvious by their suits, ties slackened and bags or cases on the floor. The noise was loud and just sounded like a foreign language as they all seemed to be talking at each other. No one seemed to be listening at all. I looked to the right and saw a group of people deep in conversation, sat snugly on the deep leather sofas, looking quite relaxed. Were these who I sought? The walls were covered in the most delightful wallpaper, black and white cows and pigs, the kind of thing one would normally associate with children, but which really did show a sense of humour along with taste and class. I managed to catch the bartender's eye and ordered a drink, non-alcoholic, cold and long. As he passed it to me, I asked if the writers group was here. He smiled and said, they're up the stairs. I looked up the steps towards the group of people and there at the back of the room was a long table. The light was dim, small candles danced on the table and around it sat a group of men and women of various ages chattering and laughing animatedly. This was, was what I was here for. It was as though I had stepped back in time. Is this what C.S. Lewis or Tolkien felt when they'd met in that pub in Oxford as part of the Inklings? The bartender was young and very chatty. This wasn't always the Black Pig, was it? No, it was the Orson Welles before, and then before that, the Kentish Yeoman. I thought as much. The door seems to be as stiff and difficult to push as it did before. And a lot of mist escaping. I guess it would be all those bodies chattering. Mist? Did you say mist? Yes. As I opened the door, a cold mist shot out and rushed down the road. He looked at me as if I'd made it up. Really? That hasn't happened for quite some time. Are you psychic? Well, define psychic. You saw and felt something odd, didn't you? Yes. Uh, would you like to just explain what I'm supposed to have seen? Well, the story goes that the spirits of like-minded souls are seated deep in the pub, and when someone is looking for a way or some inspiration, they make themselves known. A lot of bands used to come here and write and perform. Sometimes they draw big crowds. Sometimes they just played for themselves. There was one band, sorry I don't know the name, they used to spend most of their life here writing things. They sat over there, just where the writers are sitting now. Did it feel any different over there? No. Mind you, I did let them out of the front door, so I guess they aren't actually here at the moment. <laughs> Too true. Don't worry, they'll be back. I think they're here most of the time. It all sounded a little airy-fairy. Still, I definitely felt a presence and saw the mist hover, then drift. I had always thought I felt a sixth sense, and right now I could deal with all the inspiration and guidance anyone or anything could show me. OK, what more could I say? <laughs> well, the story goes that if you want success, 
and you need to pick the right seat and the spirit will come and free your mind from its constraints leaving it to be free creative but you need to pick the right seat it's the spirits that decide the deserving and reward those that present themselves sorry what do you mean it's a ritual the story is that if the right person picks the right seat they're rewarded so which one is the right seat that's for you to decide I stood and looked at the writers group how could I choose the right seat I took a deep breath I would have to introduce myself and try and be brave hi I'm Steph. Is this the writers' group? Hi. Hi! And everyone shuffled, some of them standing, and introduced themselves enthusiastically. They were keen for me to sit next to them. How could I choose the right seat now? In the end, I sat between two men who'd made a space for me. An icy chill settled on my arms, causing the hairs to prickle. It moved upwards towards my le- neck and down my spine and I shuddered. Then the chill turned into a warm and comfortable feeling. I shouldn't have worried about choosing the right seat. The writers seemed to have given it to me. I wasn't really sure if they meant me to have it, or if I got it with luck or by default. I looked around the group. Were they being admirable? Did they know what they were doing? I decided that they had given me the seat with pleasure, and I smiled at the men sat either side of me. They both winked, as if to tell me that they too had been given the seat with the ice to chill when they joined the club. And now it was their gift to me. I would be rewarded by the spirits who wanted new blood, new ideas and a new addition to the group.